Up in a corner here. Y'all, I am so upset at this therapist who was speaking to Kiki. Um, I'm so hungry, you guys, and I, I couldn't eat until I did the video. Like, I'm really hungry, like stomach growling hungry, but I'm so angry. Maybe I'm hangry, you know? <laughs> you know them people, the real reason they say hangry is because... <coughs> is because black people would say hungry, right? I'm hungry. And because it's like, when people don't understand AAVE, they give their own definitions. You know how like a black man might say, yeah, damn, that's a, you know, whatever. And then now you see non-black people saying, wow, that's a yacht. And they've given each letter in the word a definition. And I'm just like, it's just like saying, got dang and actually the reason people's black people started saying got damn is because don't take the lord's name in vain and we're such a heavily christian people instead of saying god damned we would say got damn or got dang or got darn dern something right so anyhow um that's a total tangent because i have adhd but anyhow <clears throat> I want to invoke my autism and ADHD here as a person who has been in therapy since 2013. You do the damn math, okay? As a person who has not only studied psychology, but who has been in therapy with therapists, counselors, psychologists, and psychiatrists, okay? <laughs> because I'm so disappointed in this woman. Like, I want her to lose her license. I want her to have to go back to school, recertify, re everything, because this scene was absolutely unacceptable. And if I was a black person being told I need therapy, I would look at the scene and run and say, I'm good. I can get what happened in this scene with Kiki from an aunt, from a cousin, from, from a friend, from an, I don't need this from a professional. She stepped all outside of her professional capacity. Honestly, some people, you can look at them and tell that they succumb to peer pressure because they weren't cool when they were kids. I hate to say it like that, but if we're talking psychology, let's MF and talk psychology. Please like the video, y'all. I don't mean no harm, uh, but this really, this really upset me. Um, like growing up, uh, well, here's the deal. I was actually an ugly little kid, okay? And don't don't bother me. I can post pictures to prove it. I was an ugly little kid, right? Um, I was very hairy. I had lots of long hair, and that was probably the only compliment I got until I was like 10. And once I got my period when I was 10, and that glow up was so fast, I still thought I was ugly, okay? I still thought I was this little ugly duckling, right? That was actually that play and that that story of the ugly duckling means so much to me because I was a truly beaten and abused ugly little kid. I was too big for my age. I uh, I was uh, I had a speech impediment. Sometimes I would go dumb, and dumb doesn't mean stupid. I was actually a gifted child, but I would go mute under too much pressure. I couldn't talk. Right. I couldn't perform till this day. There are certain things that I can do. I can sing, dance, act, cook. But in front of people who don't who doubt me or don't believe in me, I will F it up. OK. Anyhow, um, my glow up happened so quick. I thought mentally I stayed mentally in my my pre, you know, preteen toddler ish area. So when people were calling me beautiful, I thought they felt so sorry for me because I was so ugly that they needed to lie to me. I believed that ish until I was like 16, 17 years old. That was my mind set. I was trapped between these two ears, y'all. And people were blown away by me. People would tell me I look like a superhero. I look like a supermodel. I look like a cartoon. A body doesn't exist like that unless you draw it. What are you mixed with? You have long hair. And that's disrespectful. But we can get into that in other videos um, because people act like, in any beauty a black woman has that must come from somewhere else. No, bitch, black is beautiful like the video. Um, but I'm saying all of this to say that I know a person who has healed their inner five-year-old when I see it because I struggled with my inner five-year-old. I struggled with my inner toddler until I got into therapy. And Kiki 
doesn't have some injured five-year-old in her. And if the therapist would have effing listened to her, she would have heard because that's what your job is. I, I have week bi-weekly therapy. And let me tell you something. I do most of the talking. I do most of the talking because the therapist has to listen in order to give you advice, a diagnosis and recommendations. Damn it. Like the video, like the video. Um, uh, Kiki has an injured teenager. She doesn't have her ha, have uh, some inner five year old or some inner preteen. She's got she's got an inner teenager that is still angry and hurt by Letitia and maybe other people, but definitely by Letitia. And Kiki confessed that. And she was open enough and willing enough. That's why when I heard Mel say she's not receiving, I was like, Kiki's trying. The therapist wants to be down. The therapist is a weak ass. I've never been cool in my life. Like I, I was an ugly little kid, but once I did my beauty thing, I was on the dance team, track team, community choir. Uh, I was modeling. I was on the cheer squad, blah, 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 on TV acting. So my thing is to say, I've already been cool. When people have already been cool, you see them not so weak as to seek a crowd to follow it and to seek approval from their fucking peers. I've seen people who are doctor this and that, but because they grew up a fucking nerd, when somebody decides that they're cool, they get so excited that they lose their morals and they're just so happy to be down with the cool kids. And I see that aspect in this whack ass therapist. Weak, willed, whack therapist. She did almost everything wrong. And no matter what anybody tells you, the first time you're dealing with a therapist or a counselor, they barely talk. And if they're talking, they're asking you questions. Call it intake. They have to. I've had so many different therapists and I've done so many different intake processes and I've had to fill out the same psyche valve. And I'm like, God dang, like I already told somebody this, this is in my medical records. Like, can't you just, yes, chocolate. I know, but this is protocol. I'm mean, so all kinds of violations of protocol. Like what are you doing? You know what, you know what, you know what you guys, what this therapist did, this is why people say that women who major in psychology are in college for no reason other than to earn their MRS. So not a PhD and not a BA, but an MRS. They're looking for a man to marry so they can become a, a missus. I really want to cuss. And I've already said some bad words. And I really don't want to do too much because, hey, YouTube algorithm girl, I love you. We cool. I don't care what they say about you. You cool with me, girl. And I don't want to get my video in any more trouble with monetization than it already is like the video. Oh my gosh. But nice things in the comment section. So the algorithm will be triggered to say, hey, people said nice things. Let's recommend this to more people. Because I said bad words and I feel bad. But it's because I'm so passionate about this because I want Negroes in therapy. I feel like when I consider what I believe should be reparations, part of that is if you have a drop of Negro blood in you, if you have a drop of that, my people, I've been walking. If you have a drop of that weight in the water, I built America in your like, like free therapy, free therapy. You just get it and you get it in the best places. Not no Medicaid, Medicare, low budget like, like this woman. I, I, I hate to do it to a black woman. I really do. Sis, I hate to do it to you, but you monumentally screwed up. You used your authority to gaslight a client, a patient. And shame on you. So before I play this audio, I just want to say like this. I did watch when Tay talks. I did watch... Uh, brown skin girl and I did watch show styles and spirit. So if I say anything that they have already said, I am not copying. I am influenced. Know the difference. My apology. They have control of that. I can do nothing to control that. Period. So let me tell you what I hear. Okay. With all sincerity, I hear a woman. Sometimes when a person says in all honesty, in all truth, truth be told, they're about to lie to you sometimes. And the reason they say that is because it's been caught on. It, these are phrases that narcissists in particular have caught on to that, you know, empathetic people say. 
this let me let me finish playing it right who has a lot of growing and healing to do and it's only because we're talking and i'm not singling you out because we all have grown now you're gaslighting her gaslighting a person is telling them that reality is not effing reality so if it's cold outside and you go brr it's cold outside i say you must be sick there's something wrong with you because it's actually really warm and I talk to you like you're a freaking idiot. The word gaslighting literally came from a movie. I believe the movie was called Gaslights. And here's how it went. This husband wanted to leave his wife and take his money and run off with his mistress, but it wasn't so easy, right? So he wanted to have her committed. So they had lights in their big, beautiful mansion and the lights were run on gas. They had gas lights. And every other day he would dim the lights just a little bit. And she would go, oh, darling, it does it seem a little bit darker, dimmer? How are the, he's like, no, honey, the lights look the same as they've always looked. Oh, but honey, it's, it's so much darker in here. Well, sweetie, I'm worried about you. I think you should see a doctor. I think you should gaslighting. That's where the word comes from. A lot of psychological terminology is new, as in from the 20th and 21st century like hoovering, like, 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 like people read the word and they say, oh, when a narcissist is hovering, I'm like, nah, B word, it's hoovering, like a Hoover vacuum. Hoover, nobody does it like you, the little vacuum commercials, because they go around sucking people up back into their lives after discarding them or after, you know, going, going silent, leaving for a few months, whatever. So they call it hoovering because they're sucking you back into a vacuum. Okay. So I'll, I just say that to say that this is where the word gaslight comes from. So now that you know what gaslight means, you know, when somebody is using it the wrong way, that man made that woman believe she was out of her mind because she saw the lights getting dimmer. And he said, what the hell are you talking about, babe? You need to see a doctor. You sound crazy. And he drove her out of her mind. That is one of the most heinous forms of psychological abuse. And the, and the damn therapist is doing it. I'm not singling you out, Kiki. No, yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Because it, if it was group therapy, then talk to the group. You don't even know Kiki to talk to her like this. And she let that slip. Girl, let me play this. Let, let me play this. Healing. But I want you to know personally, that five-year-old little girl is still in you. And she shows up. And because of that unhealed wound, when you show up, you're unable to identify with other no, people. No, I have like unhealed wounds from things that she's done. Kiki just participated in the process positively. She made a positive and a vulnerable contribution. She just said, no, I don't have that issue. And here comes the therapist. Yes, you do, but you do, but you do. No, therapy lady, she doesn't have that issue. It's actually what I said. What did I say at the top of this video? I said, Kiki doesn't have some little touched and, and, and my uncle touched me five-year-old in her body and in her psychology. Kiki has an angry teenager. And I swear to goodness, in some of these conversations that Kiki has, when you look at her, you don't see a damn five-year-old. You see an angry ass teen because that is where she got traumatized and that is where she got stuck so even when she grows if you trigger that woman's ptsd she will give you the most hardcore i don't give a f teenager you ever dealt with that was the water flick that was the cussing people out and that is the defensiveness that we're seeing now when you do dark work on yourself you do start with the toddler Many people don't have a violated toddler in them, but you start from the youngest to the old, oldest. You heal your inner child. You've heard people say that a lot because it's freaking popular. It's so popular, it's become cliche. Many people don't talk about heal, healing their inner preteen. They don't talk about healing their inner teen. They don't talk about healing their inner young adult. It's wherever the trauma happened that you have to say, Kofa, go back and get it. And Kiki just said, 
my issue is is not I, 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 my issue is what she did to me and her and Tisha started their relationship and got to doing whatever they were doing when when Kiki was about 13 14 15 she's got an injured inner teen and she told the therapist that and the therapist negated that and the therapist was not supposed to do that i mean unless you have been seeing this person for at least a year you don't do that you don't do that it led up to this moment that right. five year old girl ain't got nothing to do with it. but it does though sis no. it doesn't though it does, sis though. It doesn't. I'll be that five-year-old girl with everybody in my life. I'm not. And she's okay. not. But even in and she's not. And truth be told, Kiki has more healthy relationships in her life than Letitia has in her life. We all saw Letitia force Kimmy to be her friend and use the weight of the men of the Scott family to break Kimmy into being her friend. Now, if somebody was forced to be my friend, I would say, F you, I respect myself. I'm not desperate for your company. You can get on. You know how many people feel violated when they found when they find out, well, your mom told me to be your friend. Your brother told me you really need somebody to hang out with. And they feel violated. They feel betrayed. They feel naked. They feel cheated and cheap. But not, not Leticia, not single white female over here who you really should be talking to. When it comes to unhealed people in that circle, there was so much you could have given therapy lady to that narcissist Martel, to that manipulative Marceau, to that borderline personality disorder having single white female Letitia, to that male identified uh, Kimmy who can't seem to identify with and stand up for anything related to her femininity, nor anybody who reflects femininity. She is always ready to become shout out to uh, the girl that I was just watching yesterday. She's always tempted to become masculine and put on her cape to save these Negroes, these men. She can't wait to assist a man against a woman because she's sick in the head. Being a pick me is a sickness. Being a ride or die for a man who won't ride a bike for you is a sickness. Her whole relationship with Maurice, buying a house, and writing his name on it and allowing his teenager to disrespect you in it and to not clean your house while you're walking around cancerous. You can't barely breathe. You're going through chemo and radiation and you won't stop bowing and scraping and putting up a boundary to save your own life. You're sick in the head. You're sick. You are insecure, you have low self-esteem, and you might hate yourself, and that might be the reason you can't seem to stand Melody. Because she has self-love, and because you don't have it, it bothers you. It reminds you that you don't have it. How's that for psychology? How's that for a, psycho a psychoanalysis? You could have been talking to people who really need you. You walked up on a group of people who all knew and kikied in Mel's face as her partner committed, committed revenge corn against her. And damn it, you know I don't mean corn on the cop. Those people have sickness in their minds and in their hearts, but you want to focus on Kiki because you're a weakling. You want to focus on Kiki because you saw what this show did to Dr. Francis and his practice. And you're trying to do your big one. You're hoping somebody notices you. And that's why you can't be defeated. And you have to be correct. And Kiki has to be wrong. And while you're putting her under your thumb and really under your foot. And you're humiliating her in front of her peers who are sitting there who you can see are laughing at her. When people, that's why group therapy doesn't work for everybody, damn it. Because when you have people laughing at you while you're being focused on, that's an effective filter. I walked into a group therapy meeting, the only Muslim, and it was being ran by Christians. I said something and the whole room laughed at me. I got up and I walked out. And you know who tried to follow behind me? 
the co-leader of the therapy session because he knew that that wasn't okay. And you know who encouraged them to laugh at me? We were talking about something. Uh, what is her name? Martha, Mar Martha something. Uh, she, she, she actually coined the term borderline personality disorder. We were talking about, um, um, living in the moment and, and, um, some other stuff that I don't really remember and playing your hand. And I'm just like, well, if you've got a bad hand, why would you play it? That's what I said. Why wouldn't you just fold? The whole session was set up to, you've got to play your hand. You've got to play your hand. And I'm like, if you've got a bad hand, why would you play it? Because we were talking about why people are self -acidal. And you know, the word isn't self -acidal, but I have to respect YouTube's algorithm. And it doesn't like the word sue But I'm just like, it makes sense for some people to, because if you've got a bad hand, why would you play it? You know, you're going to lose. And the Christian who was leading the therapy said something to me that made everybody laugh. But here's what happened. At first, when I said what I said, everybody goes, ooh, I didn't ask for that. I wasn't trying to own the therapist or make her feel like it wasn't really her class, but I'm a cerebral ass woman. So if you engage me in thought, then let's think together. Let's think through this now. I asked a simple question and what she said back to me had people snickering at me and looking at me like, now you go, your turn. And I was just like, this isn't what therapy is for. I didn't mean to cause that reaction. Hell, I'm autistic. Sometimes I say stuff that, you know, blows people's minds and it's just normal to me. It's just normal to me. I didn't say this to impress a crowd. You, you find that about autistic people. We don't give a fuck about the cool. We don't care about what's cool. We create cool on accident. Can you say Kanye West? Can you say Michael Jackson? Can you say Beyonce? These are all neurodivergent people. We create cool on accident. We don't even notice where the shit half the time because we're thinking about something else because we're not neurotypical. We don't think about the typical things that you think about. But when that woman did me how she did, I left. And part of the reason I'm so upset is because that is exactly what's happening to Kiki here. Now, we know as a melameter, I have taken a step back from Kiki because I don't like how she treated my girl Mel. I don't like what happened with those recordings and, the, and that blogger and all these different things. But I know bullying when I see it and I don't like it wherever I see it. And you are using your author authority therapy lady to try to be down with the Scots. I don't know what it is about people. Once they get on the set, they just, they just want to be accepted by these people. Maybe because they're a united front. Maybe because they're the majority. And I'm like, if you're that much of a mental and emotional weakling, you don't need to be giving anybody therapy. A therapist should know how to stand alone. Because that's what people who break family curses and, and generational curses do. They stand alone. And they meet so much resistance. And they need somebody who can relate to that. And if you can't, you're so busy trying to be cool, trying to be down, trying to be accepted, trying to do your big one on TV because you're on OWN's number one show instead of actually delivering therapy. Then like, what are you there for? Sis, you are no Dr. Francis. You are no Dr. Francis. Even the first lady Melody brought on the show who honestly started saying some things about Mel that made me just kind of throw her into the nether regions of I forgot you. Even she did better. Even she did better. You and your sister Lux need to go back to school. In this moment, because listen, this is the thing. If, if she was healed, no matter what situation you walked into, your temperature wouldn't change. And it didn't. It and never it didn't. did. And so, it didn't. so my you're temperature. Me. Kiki has been on the same energy. She has been being constantly attacked and ostracized by a group of people except for Melody. She is being ostracized and you're feeding into it, you weakling. Because any other therapist who was worth their salt would have saw that and changed the dynamic. You know what they would have said? Hey, everybody, let's play a seating game. Let's play a little musical chairs. Let's break up the monotony. Let's break up this wall. That's how you change the energy in a room.
Kiki came there ready to apologize and to participate, and even Stormy called it out. And Stormy was right when she said, we're sitting here saying, Kiki, 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 Kiki's wrong, Kiki's this. After you just said, oh, I'm not singling you out, you gaslighter, you are singling her out. Go away. Go, you are. I don't even know you. That's right. You don't know her. So you don't get to tell her that all the relationships in her, her life is not going to work. You don't get to tell her that. You're a therapist, not a damn fortune teller. It not change. Period. Okay, let me tell you something right now. Do you see this five-year-old girl showing up in this conversation? I guess. Yeah. Let me tell you something right now. Is a you're beneath me statement. That is what a mother, what an aunt, what an uncle, what an older cousin, what an older sister says to their inferior, to their subordinate. That is what a superior says to their inferior. Let me tell you something right now. That is a statement of authority over, authority over someone else. And then the, the woman says, let me tell you something right now and then asks the question. Okay, lady, so you said, let me tell you something and then you ask the question. So what's up with you? What, what, what's up with you right now? I know that camera is pressure on you because your words are not even coming out correctly at this point. Let me tell you something. Do you see that? Well, well let me ask you something. Do you see that five-year-old showing up? No. And you know what? You pressured Kiki to say yes. You pressured her to betray herself because she was trusting you as a professional. Shame on you. Her true answer was no, because she doesn't have a toddler problem. She doesn't have that, that abused toddler, that neglected infant who resulted in a five-year-old with low self. Her problem is her inner teen. And what's crazy is that I'm not licensed to practice anything in psychology. And I knew that the second or the second or third time I saw Kiki, maybe the third time I saw Kiki, I was like, she's got an angry teen in there. And that, because who will F up some ish harder than an angry teenager? That's why Kiki is intimidating to people. And that's why Kiki throws hands because who throws hands? Teens. Who wants to fight? Who's the most gangster? Who's the most, I'll throw my life and your life away at the drop of a dime? Teens. Who's the most, you flick a switch and they're a different person? Teens. I hope y'all hear me. Like my video, like my video, share my video. Don't just share my video because I want you to, but share it because it might help somebody. You leave a therapist like this. I had to bounce around with different therapists sometimes because I had a guy uh, therapist and he was attracted to me. I had a guy counselor and he was attracted to me. I had a, a, a white female psychiatrist and she was anti-black. I, you have to move around when the people are not meeting your needs. I had these people call me everything or not everything in the book, but diagnosed me with all kinds of stuff until I was just like, um, can I see a person who evaluates autism, please? And you know what these therapists and counselors were unqualified to do? Diagnose me with autism. See, not even other psychiatrists can do it. It must be a psychiatrist who was specifically trained in autism. So all these other people would look at my symptoms and just say, well, well, this looks like this. This looks like this. And I didn't even know that I needed to go get a specialist. Because autistic burnout, you know what it looks like? Borderline personality disorder. You know what it looks like? PTSD. You know what it looks like? This. You know what it looks like? That. It can look like those things if you don't know what the root is. Autistic overload, autistic meltdowns, autistic burnout. If you don't know that that person is autistic, it looks like something else. And so even these professionals who were decorated with degrees and licenses, they were wrong about me. And here's the, the, here's the killing part. That happens more often than you would think. Now that doesn't mean don't go get therapy because it was being in therapy for years that helped me to figure it out. And it was also, it was also my mom because my mom would always call me after autistic characters uh, on TV. Uh, you know, like uh, Carol Ann from the Poltergeist. 
you know, when I was really little, I was about the same size as Carol Ann, the whole don't go into the light and she was possessed and, and going through all those kind of things. You know, my whole family would be in the living room. Ah, look at chocolate. Ah, you know, it was a joke. And then I got a little older and then it's like the Adams family came out and it's like, oh Lord, look at chocolate. Guess who chocolate was? If you say chocolate is my legal name, by the way, I was born chocolate angel. This is the channel uppity unicorn. Please refer to me as uppity. Um, they call I was Wednesday. Every single time or, or like the, the little white girl, the blonde girl with the ponytail on them on leverage, leverage. If you've ever seen leverage, really hot black guy uh, stars in that. Uh, I forgot his name. He was also in uh, the underground with uh, Journey Smollett. But my mom's like, oh, the little blonde girl with a ponytail. She's just like you. <laughs> she's so cute, but boy, will she whoop your A. <laughs> she acts so dumb, but she's so smart. And then finally, my mom was like, hey, Sheldon, come give me a hug. And once she started calling me after all these autistic characters on TV, I was like, hey, Doc, I got a question. I got a question. I was so relieved when I found out that I was autistic because it made life make sense. It put my differences together like a puzzle and that's why one of the symbols of autism is a puzzle piece. Some people are lucky they catch it when you're a kid. But black people, especially in the 90s, not so much. And of course, they were diagnosing little white boys. It was supposed to be a little white boys disorder. So being a black girl, no one was ever going to catch it. They just decide you have a mood disorder. They decide you're angry. They give you whatever is, is angry, you know. I was so happy because I had been through so much. <laughs> And I finally had a roadmap of how to deal with myself and other people. But when therapists don't know, some therapists could have looked at me and made a recommendation and they didn't. Because my autism didn't look how they wanted it to look. Or how they think it's supposed to look. But this is part of the reason why I... Um, I'm, I'm sitting here hungry with my stomach growling, but I'm so angry I have to make the video. Because when I tell you, I, in my personal opinion, this therapist should lose her license for this. You are bullying and isolating your, audi your, your client in front of an audience. It's, it's bigger than, than, oh, shame on this therapy therapist. It's bigger than that. You just lie to somebody about themselves and because of their authority, they will believe you. You know how many times that happens to kids? And of course, Kiki's a strong adult, but you know how many times that happens to kids? An adult will lie to them about themselves and they'll believe it. And not just kids, but, but vulnerable adults. So autism, ADHD, uh, insert a uh, 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 neurodivergent thing. You can lie to these people about themselves and they'll believe you. And they can develop an issue with themselves because they think you told them the truth because you had the certifications and the authority to do so. Lady, you're no Dr. Francis. You're a whole mental and emotional weakling, and you succumbed to cameras and peer pressure. Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop. She's right here. Still. She's present with us. That's fine. Because you. And then you got the psychopath, Martel, trying to tell Kiki anything. Martel is in no position to advise anybody in that group about mental and emotional health. But that's the kind of environment you created with your authority, with your authority, therapy lady. I don't even know your name and I'm not going to learn your name because I want to forget you. After I make this video, I want to forget you because I'm pissed. I'm, I'm angry.
Because this this happens to it reminds me of that. What's that doctor who just said black women, uh, Doctor Jackie or something, who said black women uh, play up their 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 pain in pregnancy. I'm a whole ass statistic when it comes to black matricide and infanticide. My kid died and I died too. I just so happened to walk off of my deathbed. I did not want to make it. I had full term preeclampsia. So when I tell you medical malpractice and the way that uh, doctors are to black women, what the police are to black men, I'm a whole ass statistic. I walked into that hospital with a baby and I walked out without one. Dr. Jackie. And it's the same thing with this therapy. And people will tell black women everything about themselves. And I'm just like, but you guys are black too. You Dr. Jackie and you whack ass therapists, you guys are black too. Why are you doing this to your people? We're supposed to be able to look into our our reflection and trust it. But you Negro peon, you whole coon. What a gravity, what a, what a, what a great thing it is to betray your own people for power, your own people who are already oppressed and dealing with everything else. What a travesty, like what a tragedy it is. See her? There she goes. <laughs> That's fine. I'm okay with it. Because I have I have my my I know I'm a little emotional, but getting back to the topic, I hope you heard that therapist laugh at Kiki. You see her? There she goes. <laughs> I hope I this is not going to be the last time she laughs at Kiki only intentions for you is so pure mm -hmm. lies your intentions are not pure just because a person says their intentions are pure doesn't mean that they are she's trying to reset kiki after dissing her she's trying to press the reset button after dissing her it's like somebody slapping you and then trying to hold your hand it's so pure but that five-year-old girl won't release you sis and so you're unable to hear that that five-year-old girl won't release you, sis, was incredibly condescending. Incredibly condescending. And when you condescend to people, they become defensive. You cannot decide that there's some, some kind of psychosis going on with a person that you have just condescended to. Like, oh, well, you're so defensive. You're condescending to her. People get angry about that. People get attitudinal about that. That's normal and natural. What I am trying to give to you. Yeah, I don't hear right? it. Because I you feel you. attacked. And I'm not attacking you. You are attacking me. I would me. never. You are. I want nothing but the best for you. No, you But don't. until you are able. You want nothing but the best for you. You're hoping being on Love and Marriage Hunt School does something for your career like it does for Dr. Francis. And again, it will not because you are no Dr. Francis. And there have been therapy people on here before who are no Dr. Francis. And well, it, it honestly, a platform, when you get a platform, all it does is magnify you. It can't make you great. It can't make you bad. It only magnifies what is already in you. So if Dr. Francis blew up, it's because he was already amazing. And more people got to see that light once they gave him a beacon. Like a bat signal, he was able to shine his light the way that you're able to shine your filth and incompetence, lady. Able to sit in a setting with someone and heal her and let her know it's okay to sit down. I got you, baby girl. And you talk to her. And you release her. And here's what I didn't like about my girl Mel's commentary. The way Kiki is looking at the therapist, she's trying to receive her, but the therapist is wrong. So when Mel was like, you know, Kiki's not receiving it and that's okay. And, it, and you're right, Mel, it is okay. She's like, but I see it. And I'm just like, she's trying. The conflict is that the therapist is wrong. The counselor is wrong. So then what? What do you do? There's going to be resistance. She's trying to accept a lie about herself, and that's dangerous. 
Y'all, that's so dangerous. That has caused people to take themselves out of the world when they believe, believe a lie about themselves. And you let her know she's no longer needed because Kiki, the grown woman, is there and she knows how to handle situations. This therapist is so defensive. She's so trying to establish herself as the big dog and you see it all over her body language, the way she moves her head and the way she kind of soft voice some of these things that can be really aggressive if you say them in a different voice. That patronizing ass sis. I wish Kiki would have been like, I'm not your sis. <laughs> Don't call me sis because I'm not your sister. <laughs> Even when they are disagreeable. But until she's healed, sis, a lot of your relationships will be problematic. And I don't even know you like that. I don't have any problem. you're problematic. You're, here's the deal. You're problematic. <laughs> Who loves you? Let's see your ring and your friends and your family and what, what you got going on. Who loves you? Who likes you? Who has longevity with you, lady? Kiki has a husband who would give her, I, I mean, a kidney, an artery, like, like, like just, just insert organ. Kiki has a lot of long-term relationships and many of the teachers are manipulated. She just forces people to feel sorry for her. And then if they have a heart in their chest, they, they start feeling guilty. Again, there were so many people in the circle who her expertise could have benefited. And she just zeroed in on Kiki because everybody else zeroed in on Kiki. By the way, uh, Nell, I, I hope you feel bad. I think you feel bad. You, you made faces like you feel bad, like you see what everybody's trying to do to Kiki in this whole gang up thing. But I hope you feel bad. I hope you and Fletcher feel bad about this. Not because I think you're bad people or you feel you need to be punished, but because you guys are likable and powerful and you guys, at least as far as the show is concerned, and you guys have what it takes to turn that tide. This show should never allow bullying. A show can be dramatic and great and wonderful and full of tea and this and that without allowing bullying. Let mothers go head to head. I heard somebody say the other day, if Tisha thinks she is shark, then let that bitch swim. And and, and it was good to me. It, it, it was good to my soul. Like, like just let it happen. Let it happen. You want to be so confrontational. You want to do all of this and all of that. And then you run and you, you run for shelter. And she's over here nodding and like, yeah, you tell her therapy lady, you tell her counselor. And I'm just like, truth be told, you're the one you're, you and Martel are the same person in, in reverse. And y'all need to be the focus of this conversation, even more so than Kimmy and Maurice. You two, Letitia and Mart Martel, are the worst off mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and even intellectually. You're the worst off in the group. The worst by leaps and bounds. It's not Kiki's place. But no, I know. No, no, I have all of my best friends, and I have like eight best friends. We are still best friends. No problems. No problems with my friends. You're right. Let me say no, it this way. Let me say you this way. It's gonna Seriously, be. Seriously, she is the only person I ever had a problem with. Ever. <laughs> let me tell you this way. Because I think I husband. need to re say it. My husband, that's it. Let, let me now, say I do have problems with him. I don't think Kiki is really hearing what's being said. I don't think she wants to receive it, even. And that's okay. She doesn't have to, but I see it though. Let me that's let me it. say it to you this way, okay? That's okay, Mel. Um, I think you're missing it. And I think, I mean, I, I see this sometimes where uh, I think because Mel has such a good disposition and she has such a light spirit and contrary to whatever Letitia said about her having a dark heart, she has such a light heart that Mel is truly in the moment with the therapist and Mel is so strong and self-loving that she has an effective, a very effective filter to filter out the negativity from the Scots. Whereas Kiki does have work to do and she can't filter that out. It's not that Mel doesn't have work to do, but I'm saying because Mel has done so much work with her divorce and with going through therapy and all this other stuff and with discovering self-love, because Mel will tell you herself, part of the reason she stayed with Martel so long is because she didn't love herself and loving her, she had to love herself enough to leave and she got there. 
Okay. So Mel has done so much work on herself that she can just, she can flex positive in any situation. And I'm just like, you're, you're so above the fray, Mel, that I think you're missing it. You're, you're so beyond the pettiness of the group that you're, that you're missing it. So, so Kiki not receiving her is perfectly fine because this woman is in the complete wrong and she's using her license just like a pastor and, and these priests who use their authority to abuse children and vulnerable women. This is the same position the therapist is in. Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to say it differently. It's going to be difficult for you to receive things from someone. Mm -hmm. No, it's not difficult for it's only difficult for her to receive from you because you're giving her something she doesn't need or require later lady. You are offering up to her something she doesn't need or require. You ever have you ever need a tool, you, you need a hammer and people keep giving you a, a, a screwdriver. And you got a you got a kitchen cabinet full of screwdrivers and it's like I need a hammer. You keep giving me tools I don't need. So yeah, rejection. I don't want it. I already have this. I'm good here. Where I'm not good, you're not you're not providing anything for that. This Kiki tried to walk this therapist into the area of her actual struggle. And the therapist was like, like Kimmy, no, 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 no. And it's Kiki's like, I'm opening up here and I'm showing you where the issue is. But you don't want to come along because you want to look like you're in control. You want to look like the top dog and you want to be approved by whoever's watching the show. And you're like, damn near shows style and spirit was like, this lady is like low key matching energy with Kiki. And I'm just like, yeah, I second that. Absolutely. And as a therapist, that's not where you should ever be going because you're trying to help the person. You're trying to help. right for for people to to implant um wonderful and amazing tools for you because you won't receive them because i feel like it, all of that is pointless at this point what was done was done there's no rewinding now and here's the deal the, the therapist actually just pivoted so they were talking about her and tisha and the group dynamics and then all of a sudden, the therapist shifted to herself when she said, well, you won't be able to receive these amazing tools that someone has to give you. The therapist has just centered herself. Where do they do that at? Where do they do that at? Where does the counselor center themselves and not the counseled? Where do they do that at? What school did she graduate from? Somebody needs to be held accountable. Because the therapist, Kiki is still on the matter of counseling. She's still on what was the matter at hand. But the therapist just switched topics to herself. Basically telling Kiki, well, you can't receive anything from me because you're so broken. And I have amazing tools to give you, but you're still five years old. And I'm like, my guy, this is not about you. It, can, it, it is never supposed to be about you in this capacity. What? <laughs> What the effing F, bro? I apologize. I've acknowledged my wrong. I, I apologize. But we have decided not to move forward in this relationship. I'm so at peace with it. Yeah. I'm, I don't want to move forward. I don't want to talk about it. And then, let now, as a sidebar, Marceau was calculating in his head. You see his face is straight. He is calculating in his head how Kiki and Letitia no longer having loyalty to one another is going to affect him because Kiki holds back off of Marceau's ASS because she loves her cousin. But once that love is lost, he can be exposed. And that's why he was the one in, in this whole therapy scene talking about, I want to leave doors open because of love. And he wanted to love and, and, and love and brother love and did he love and, and love. And I'm just like, no, 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 no. You're scared. Kiki lays off of you and your secrets because she she she's in love with her cousin. The day that love dies, you are no longer safe. And that's the reason for that long, hard look he's making. Go watch it. I got to say, I'm 
I'm done. What do we need resolve for? I apologize for what I did wrong. We can move our separate ways and we can occupy the same space and not even see each other. And I'm okay with that. And you know what? I'm not even talking about your relationship with Tisha. I'm I'm not even talking about that. <laughs> that's not even All right, what that's that's the second time that's the second time this this therapy lady has laughed in kiki's face marceau's laughing other people are laughing in her face you cannot help somebody when you're making a joke out of them know that i'm communicating with you at all okay that's what we were discussing right but i'm saying when i was speaking with you Right, the defensiveness, it doesn't even have anything to do with this relationship. I'm just speaking to you outside of T. I don't even see her right now. Right, I'm, I'm locked in with you. You're not locked in with her, and you do see them. You're lying. You know what you sound like? You sound like all those non-black people who say, I don't even see color. I don't even see color. What do you mean? I don't see color. When somebody says, I don't see color, I know they're full of ish. Because whenever you are going somewhere, and this is why I feel like trans people have to calm the hell down, because when you are walking somewhere, the first thing somebody sees is your color and your gender. You can be coming from as far away as you want to, but they're looking and they see a man or woman walking, a boy or girl, a child or something, and then they see your color. This is why, I, I mean, it's like, it's, it's like having a car, a, a, a car lot, just like, well, what color car do you want? I don't see color. <laughs> I, I, I don't see color. No, you want the baby blue. You want that chocolate brown. You want to see what that crimson red do. Come all the way up off it. I don't even see them right now. I'm locked in with the, you. No, you're not. You're not locked in with her. You're actually locked in with the bullies. You're locked in with everybody else. That's who you're locked in with. And, and you know what this reminds me of? You guys remember Thriller? Thriller, Thriller Night. With Michael Jackson and, and the girl walking. And then, you know, she's locked in with Mike. And then all of a sudden she looks at Mike and Mike is a zombie and she realizes she's alone. That's what this scene is giving. You're saying you're locked in with Kiki. You're not locked in with her. You're a zombie like the rest of them. So I don't even want you to attempt to heal this because you can't. Oh, no. Now look at this idiot. That's redundant. And yeah, I call her an idiot. What are you going to do? What is she going to do? Listen, she's repeating what Kiki just said. Kiki just said that this is done. And now she's telling her, yeah, this is done. And you can't do anything about this. I already said that. So now what do you have to offer as a professional? Kiki already said this is a done deal. She already said this is fine, but you're not going to sit here and blame Kiki like, oh, well, until you change, because Tisha has a ton of changing to do that she will never do. That's a whole, she's the one who's got little kid issues. That's a toddler. And y'all know that that is the toddler in this situation because Tisha acts like a toddler. This is the actual five-year-old who acts like a five-year-old, who runs away like a five-year-old, to cry in the kitchen like a five-year-old, to have other people fight her battles like a five-year-old. That is the toddler you should be talking to. Kiki is struggling with her injured inner teen. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me you don't see a toddler. When, whenever Tisha is having a problem, tell me you don't see a kid in a, in a damn pull-up, potty training and whatnot. There's no way. There's no way you can heal this until you heal inside. Because you, we, we're going to, you guys are going to be speaking different languages. Because you can't hear us or you can't even hear me. I don't... Now listen to what she just said. You guys are going to be speaking different languages because you can't hear us. So remember when the bitch said that she was locked in with Kiki, but then she called her and Marceau and Tisha and everybody else there, us? What comes after us? Us versus what? Us versus them. You can't hear us. Us. Lady, you just revealed, you just subconsciously revealed who you're really locked in with. 
You can't, you can't hear us. You, singular you, not plural you, cannot hear us, plural, more than one group, us. That is who you're locked in with. How is that for a critical analysis? How is that for a psychological analysis? You're leaking, sis. You just said, you, you just identified yourself. You just blew up your location. You cannot hear us. That's a crowd against an individual if I ever heard it. I don't know about her. But in this moment, you can't hear me. If I was, uh, wh what's her name? Nakisha Jabbar. <laughs> Once she said you can't hear me, I would have acted like a, I would have acted like a five year old. I'd have put my fingers in my ear and said, la 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 la. I can't hear you. You want a five year old? I'll show you one. This was a nasty scene, and I hope that I have conveyed to people who are less sensitive about this thing just how nasty the scene was. Now I'm hungry and I'm tired and I'm fixing to make me a salad. Oh my God, my stomach. But I had to do this. I couldn't let this go in the moment because it was too important. Do y'all hear me? Can y'all can y'all just comment now? Do y'all hear me? About like like the do y'all feel why I'm having such a visceral reaction to this? Do you understand? Because I feel like people, you don't have to go through therapy to understand. You don't have to be in therapy. You don't even have to support therapy to understand. Again, people exploit their power. Sometimes teachers tell students things that they shouldn't. Sometimes pastors and priests and community leaders and parents and, and, and family members in the village that it takes to raise a child. Sometimes they say things to that child that they shouldn't. Sometimes people in positions of power use that power to speak death into people who are not in those same positions of power, who are subordinates. And I'm glad Kiki was strong because a more vulnerable person would have been steamrolled by that woman. And I say that as a person who used to be a more vulnerable person who got steamrolled by people speaking death into me death over my life, over my gifts, over my talents, over my beauty, over everything. And I gave in and I believed it. And I operated that way. I operated as an enemy against myself because I gave people opportunities as elders and respected adults with, the, with my Louisiana ass upbringing. I would allow these people to sow into me seeds that were barren and did not grow. When I was a kid, when I was a young adult, I allowed people to sow into me in ways that they never should have. I had a whole mentor who was jealous of me. Damn near twice my age, some perverty church guys that she had a crush on, had crushes on my little 19 year old self. And I didn't know what to do with that. She made my life miserable because I allowed her to be close to me. And I see that so much in Kimmy and Letitia. They cannot stand Melody. They love the perks that come with being with Melody. And they always want to be close enough to her to hurt her. The moment she lets them in, they're like, yeah, go Martell, go Martell, go. Go Martell, go Martell, go. You look like Martell with them glasses on, with them glasses on. Yeah, you guys, are, okay. <laughs> Somebody said, Letitia, do you look like the Poe emoji because both y'all wearing brown? <laughs> oh my gosh. Anyhow, I'm 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 glad I got that laugh here at the end because I was actually really upset. I find this really upsetting. I find psychological abuse really upsetting. Because I mean, if you beat somebody down, you know. You stomp on somebody, you smack somebody, you punch them. Okay, they got a black eye and a busted lip. Guess what they're not going to have in a week? A black eye and a busted lip. But when you psychologically beat somebody down and torment them, you know what they're probably going to have for the rest of their life, especially if they are a child or vulnerable adult, they're going to have that wound. And that is why Kiki has an injured inner teen. Because that stuff lingers. 
and you have to purposely break through it and work on it in order to clean it up. And it sucks to have to clean up a mess that somebody else made. So many of us has been in situations where people made a mess of us, but we were left with the broom and the mop. They weren't going to give us closure. They weren't going to apologize. They weren't going to do anything. And we just got left with the muck and the miry clay. And it's like, all right, somebody passed me the Dawn dish soap. I got to wash this, this big black oil off me like, like, like a duck. And it's hard. And it's in my eyes and ears and it burns and it whatever. And nobody has to do it but you. That's why some people isolate themselves. Because they're not interested in the mess that humanity could make of them. That their families, that their coworkers, they just tune out. And they're in love with their beds. It, it just just, uh, just the, the cushion of it all and the blankets and the heated blankets and hababosha. My mom just got me a heated blanket uh, for the holidays. And I mean, some people would rather just, just veg out and scroll TikTok and be comfortable because at least they can dictate the stimulus that comes into their life. Because you start interacting with people. I don't know what this lady's problem with Kiki was, but this lady clearly had a problem with Kiki. I think based on the way that lady's body is built, I think maybe in another life she was a tough girl and Kiki's a tough girl. And there's kind of a squabble to be the number one tough girl, you know, who, who can beat up who if you ever, you know, in middle school and high school, people get into fights and they want to pair people up. And, oh, I wonder what happened if so-and-so and so-and-so got into a fight. I'd pay to see that. But, I mean, this lady had an issue with Kiki. I, I don't care what anybody says. You can't convince me otherwise. This lady had an issue. See, here's 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 what I'm going to close on. Don't try to teach people self-esteem if you ain't got it. Don't try to teach people self-love because that's what's really going to heal, heal you. My mama used to sing to me the greatest love of all by Whitney Houston every single day of my life when I was a child. Taking me to school, doing my hair, somehow she would she would fit it in. And some of the most powerful words in that song is the greatest. Um, learning to love yourself is the greatest love of all. And in the song, she's like, you know, the greatest love is, is happening to me. And people think it's it's getting married. People think it's having a kid. People think it's, think it's, think it's, I'm like, you can be toxic to people until you love yourself. And even if you're not toxic to other people, because I've seen people with low self-esteem who are utterly unproblematic. And the only person they hurt is themselves. Congratulations. You can be toxic to yourself. Damn the other people. You can be toxic to you when you don't love yourself. You better find a way around that big nose and that nappy hair and that dark skin and thick lips and, and whatever else it is. You better find a way to love it. You better start associating that, that those features with the kings of the past. I suggest you go look at a, at a sphinx and an Olmec head and you can find your way through whatever somebody taught you to hate about yourself and you, you find you some love. Somebody once told me I had slave feet, and I do. I got the yabba dabba uh, uh, They're cute, but, you know, I'm, I'm a big girl. I'm damn near six feet, 200 pounds. I'm a big girl. And this man was commenting on my feet. He was like, Dane, you got slave feet. And I'm like, you a house nigga. You got house nigga feet, you pretty bitch. What do you want to do? Yeah, I got my black ass away. That, that's Harriet Tubman on my shit. What are you going to do with me? You can't insult me no way, especially not about my goddamn blackness, nigga. I don't know who told your self-hating ass that that was going to bother me, but that just makes me look down on you. Kunta Kinte, bitch. I'm, I'm, I'm solid. Next. Is, is that the best you got? <laughs> and it was at a time I was really young. I was 19 when this happened. And it's because so many people would call me pretty all the time that certain men would feel they needed to humble me. And they would look for anything on my body, something wrong. And it's usually people would talk about my nose or my feet. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. I, I can go to Machu Picchu and, and I can go all over South America and I can go to pyramids. And you know what? The spirits there will recognize me by my nose and by my features. Those That ancient DNA and bloodline spirits will talk to me based on this nose on my face. 
I have the nose of an Aztec, of an Olmec. You, you, what, what are you going to do with me? What, do you, what are you going to do with me when I'm proud of my heritage, when I love who I am? Insult me how? But it took work to get there. And I did that work with reading, with self-image psychology, but also in therapy. And that is why, uh, and, and I'm leaving and I'm, I'm closing. Uh, that is why I'm having such a visceral response to this. Because as a half of black culture, and y'all are not going to like this, half of black culture are adaptations to low self-esteem. I should run after saying that. I should just book. Um, but half of the certain things you see that are happening in black culture that have become part of the culture, these are things rooted in low self-esteem. For example, people's fascination with, you know, all that I'm a pimp, big pimp and spend and G. Like, yeah, you're you're excited about being a human trafficker. Please go and alive yourself. Oh God, please. You're a stain on humanity. But everybody wanted to be, I'm a mother, good P-I-N-P. I don't know what you heard about me, but if you can't get a dollar out of me, yeah, you won't give a woman any money. Meanwhile, the Arab men are, are pride themselves on how much money they can spend on their wives. Throw yourself away. You're useless. And maybe 50 is not like that now, but I'm just saying, like, we built a culture around things that have so much to do with low self-esteem. And our men were not allowed to be men by the men who colonized them. So they're just like, well, let me colonize the women. Let me set my, my eyes on a weaker target. And like, yeah, you're over here trying to argue with, fight with, and conquer the bodies of black women when really men are supposed to be competing with men. So every time I see Marceau arguing online with women, I'm just like, well, damn. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because if you're such a man, you need to be competing with other men. Men need not compete with women like women need not compete with children. Okay? And I'm out of here. Let me, because um, I want you guys to still be able to comment. Let me do this so you guys can talk to me. Mm -hmm.